fire the hitting coach and the bullpen coach? Yeah, that and the, what, Latin American scouting director? How about a cafeteria worker while you're at it? Oh, wait, better yet, sell the team. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dayan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. No, nothing's official, but it's getting there. It's getting there. Late last night, I reported on DK Pittsburgh Sports that Andy Haynes, the hitting coach, and Justin Message, the bullpen coach, were fired. I'd heard about both of those guys being targets for firing a week ago. And my only thought at the time was, really, that's it? Those are the two? But those were the only two names, the only two positions. And lo and behold, what happens on the first day after the season? Those two are gone. And nobody else. Ben Charrington remains employed. After four last place finishes in five years, Derek Shelton remains employed. After four last place finishes in five years. They both remain employed after 76 win outputs in consecutive years, the second of those years, which saw Paul Skeens fall to them from the baseball gods. And they're still employed. They're changing the windows of a bombed out house. They're going to replace Haynes with exactly Haynes 2, because the hitting philosophy, as I've been telling you for two years, isn't his. It's Charrington's. They're going to replace Message with a bullpen coach, as if bullpen coaches matter. Anyone who knows baseball knows how laughable it is to fire the bullpen coach over bullpen performance. Can anyone at 115 Federal hear the laughter? Is Bob Nutting aware of what anyone else in the industry is thinking about this scene? Firing a bullpen coach over bullpen performance. They're clipboard holders. Is Nutting aware? Is Travis Williams aware? Because if neither of them is aware, then I got to tell you, the fault isn't with anybody else. They're the only two people who could do something about this. And if they're not aware of what's happening right under their noses, with this GM just kind of cherry picking a handful of people, that he knows he can replace with exact replicas, all the while trying and failing, I might add, to gaslight the public because I guess everybody in Pittsburgh is stupid, then that's not on Charrington. Certainly not on Shelton. It's on Nutting. It's ultimately on Nutting. And the best solution for this, maybe the only solution for this, is for him to sell the team. And yeah, I know because I've been the one saying it for... A long, long time now, you can't make him sell the team. As in, you can't fire him. But that doesn't make it the wrong thing to do to make that the focal point. And not all these underlings and people he's enabled and people he's going to continue enabling, apparently. It's about him. He hired them. He hired Charrington. He hired the wrong GM when it came down to two finalists and the other was Matt Arnold. Now the astoundingly successful of the brewers who are based in Milwaukee, a market two-thirds the size of Pittsburgh. He blew that. Nutting blew that. And what he's doing right now is not acknowledging that mistake. He's burying himself in that mistake. Or, worse, he isn't aware of it. Not because he's not around. I tell you all the time, he's around. I just think, and I've had reasons to think this in the past as well, these guys are really, really good at gaslighting, and they're, there's going to be 10 times the effort invested in gaslighting nutting that there is in gaslighting us. But you know what? That's not Charrington's fault either. Certainly not Shelton's fault. That's Nutting's fault. It's been 17 years of this. 17 years. Three playoffs, four winning seasons. And it always points back, all of it, to one individual. As with any company, that individual is at the very top. He needs to sell the team. And he needs to be made to sell the team. And that, my friends, isn't going to happen because of any column that I write, any Daily Shot of Pirates podcast. I'm one voice. That's it. Just one. 
And I can easily be characterized from the inside as someone who's like, you know, the boogeyman or he's just out to get them or has a screw loose or whatever. But when it's the public, when it's the public at large, when it's the public speaking up collectively, when it's the public putting on the pressure vocally, visibly, not all these stupid boycotts that people pretend to be engaging in. That's just status quo. An empty stadium in Pittsburgh, an empty baseball park in Pittsburgh is status quo. It sends no message at all. But standing up for your city, standing up for a 143-year-old civic institution that deserves to be identified with Hannes Wagner, Roberto Clemente, Willie Stargell, Andrew McCutcheon, Paul Skeens, instead is identified almost universally around here with nutting. That's not okay. Steelers fans, when they didn't like what was going on with their team, they stood up. They made themselves heard. They found a way. Penguins fans, just before that, when they didn't like the way things were going, both of these things happening just in the past three years, they stood up. Where the hell are the fans of this franchise? The real fans. The ones who want to see it made right. The ones who look at the current playoffs and see a bunch of teams based in virtually identical or smaller markets participating in the Major League Baseball playoffs that begin today. Where are those people? Boycotting? What's your boycott doing? Nothing. I'll keep talking, but I'm not going to be the one that makes a difference. That's either you or it isn't anyone at all. When we come back, J1Q... It's Gun Storage Check Week. Help prevent unwanted access to your firearms. No one wants their unsecured gun to be used in an accident, a suicide, or a crime. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to secure your firearms. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org. That's GunStorageCheck.org. Brought to you by NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. J1Q comes from James in New York who says, DK, I went to see the Pirates this weekend in the Bronx. I found myself not that upset that Paul Skeens only pitched two innings, anything to keep him healthy, and I still like PNC Park better than Yankee Stadium. Could the Pirates please extend Skeens? Any extra years would give us hope. This is what all sports leagues give fans with a salary cap. James, the the concept of hope around here as it relates to baseball is, it's not non-existent. It's also not far from non-existent. Because you can talk about signing skeins. You can sign skeins to some, you know, 15-year, billion-dollar deal. You can pay him at the rate that you pay or that the Dodgers pay Shohei Otani and Whatever, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. Because the people who work for the Pirates, and in fact the person who owns the Pirates, don't prioritize winning. They prioritize their processes. They like to win when it happens, but it's not at the top of the list. The safety and the solvency of the business is at the top of the list. I don't have to wonder about this. A person who used to be really, really, really high up in that administration once told me that Nutting told them, and I quote directly here, one thing you will never see from us under Bob is deficit spending. End quote. Now, on one hand, that's admirable. We've seen what kind of trouble the franchise gets in when it engages in deficit spending. It puts the existence of the team in jeopardy. But you know, I know, this individual knew, and Nutting knows that that's not exactly what's happening here. He does profit from the team. It's nowhere near the absurd estimates that get flown around out there, and I know that because I've seen the books, but he does profit. And one of these days, when he does sell the team, 
he's going to make a murderous killing off of it. My belief is that the pirates could right now be sold for $1.5 billion. $1.5 billion with a B, as in baseball, dollars. And that's not just at the top of his list. That's top of mind. Well, you know what? Go right ahead and live that out. We've seen what's happened in Baltimore since they changed ownership. We've seen it in other places. Believe me, they'd love to have seen it in Oakland. Nutting is not evil. Nutting's not the cartoon character that some make him out to be, but he's a very, very, very bad baseball owner. He's very, very, very bad for Pittsburgh. And he's very, very, very times 17 bad for the Pirates. Now, my J1Q back to you is what are you going to do about it? Not me, not reporters, reporters cover news. What are you going to do about it? Let me know. We'll talk about it on tomorrow's show. 